Welcome to the Career Change Podcast, where you'll discover the frank and practical advice and resources that are already proven to work in the real world when it comes to changing careers or figuring out what business is right for you when you are a smart but likely also stuck, overwhelmed or overthinking person in your mid-30s, your 40s, your mid-50s. I'm your host, Ricky Hansen, a career change advisor, entrepreneur and former corporate HR professional with over 15 years experience of helping thousands of people just like you identify or create careers or businesses that are both meaningful and future-proof. Welcome home. Let's talk about how you can avoid making the wrong career change decision. Because you're likely listening to this episode because you are afraid of making the wrong decision when it comes to your career change. Maybe you're afraid of of not being able to make the perfect, the right decision when your big career change moment arrives. Maybe you worry that you won't be able to trust yourself to not mess up such a big moment, such a big decision. Now, if that sounds familiar, this is about worrying about making the wrong career change decision, then you are not alone in worrying about that. But it's likely and probably also why you're not making or have not yet made any decisive or clarifying decisions at all, and why you might still feel in limbo land with your career change. You know, maybe you're the classic multi-passionate type who does not want to choose between your many ideas or your many passions, even if that, interestingly enough, means that right now you've not started working with any of them. Instead, what you have is just a job you don't enjoy, the default choice. Or maybe you're the classic overthinker, you know, overthinker, over-researcher, who just keeps overthinking and over-researching everything over and over and over just to be on the safe side. You know, anything but making a real decision, right? (laughs) But that also means that you're still waiting for that big decisive moment that somehow hasn't arrived. Or maybe you don't trust yourself when it comes to the big decisions in life. Or you don't feel confident enough or ready enough. So what happens? You put off making decisions. Or so you think. Because let's face it, meanwhile, whilst you think you're putting off the decisions, decisions are still being made by default, by inaction or by others. Decisions that do impact you. My dear listener, I've got you. You are in the right place. And if you can relate to any of this, this episode is for you. Let's talk about how you can avoid making the wrong decision when it comes to your career change. Let me say right up front, it's important that you give yourself the gift of making decisions again and again. And I truly want you to start thinking about decision making as a gift you give to yourself it gives you relief, it gives you clarity. And I want to get you to get into this habit, the gift of getting into the habit of making decisions on a regular, ongoing basis, starting now. That's the antidote to everything that we just talked about. If you implement what you learn in this episode, you can avoid, or if you already messed up, at least you can start dealing with the paralyzing pileup of unmade decisions that are likely sucking your energy and sabotaging your career transition or own business right now. This episode will also help you avoid the decisions that are made by default and in action instead of by you. Being the key decision maker in your own life and especially in your work life might not be how you approached your work life or your life full stop so far. But you deciding to become the key decision maker in your own work life is one of the most empowering experiences you will ever have. And your career transition, your career change is the perfect opportunity for practicing your decision making skills and abilities again and again and again. As a matter of fact, Whether you'll end up changing careers or starting that business or not, to a large extent, depends on your ability to or willingness to learn and become used to making decisions again and again and again. 
And let me give you the good news right up front. You know what? The side effect, the benefit of making decisions and taking the corresponding actions on a regular basis, guess what? The side effects of that is self-confidence and self-trust. Would you like some of that? Here's the thing. Your career change is the perfect time to start. So get ready to make some different choices and see your transition take off as a result. We will look at three ways you can do this, three concrete strategies inside of this episode. Number one is don't fall for the one big decision fallacy. Strategy number two is make micro decisions, take micro actions. Number three is become the key decision maker in your own work life. But let's start this podcast episode by busting, ugh, busting a pervasive pressure building and totally untrue in real life myth or fallacy. And that's really strategy number one. Don't fall for the one big decision fallacy. Here's a spoiler alert. Oh, actually, let's do a reality check right up front. Let me tell you this. When it comes to career change, there is no one big decision moment when you will finally decide everything. There is no one big decision. There is no one big decision that everything depends on or hinges on. And I really want to talk about this because you might be falling for this one big decision fallacy yourself. And that might be why you're not making progress with your career change. Because there is this pervasive myth around career change that so many people believe in and hence they're still waiting. They believe that somehow they'll come to this major fork in the road moment. Whoa, you know, and there's this moment they'll come when you must make the decision that you have to pass the test, you know, get it right. If not, you'll screw everything up. You know, everything hinges on that one decision, that one moment. And let's face it, it, it's very pervasive in our culture and it's inspired by myths and stories. And we used, we just believe in these kind of like, oh, for the important things, there's just one big decision and there's this one big moment. And, and whew, talk about pressure, right? You know, but here's the thing. You are not Frodo. This is not Mordor. You're not here with the ring. And unless you throw that ring in the fire, we're all screwed. You know, but you might have bought in to this myth and believe that when it comes to career change, it's exactly the same thing. (laughs) No pressure, right? But let me pop that cherry for you. Let me tell you what I can tell you for fact, for sure, having been in the arena of career change of entrepreneurship for over 15 years and having helped and advised and come across thousands of people and observed their transition, that thing about the one big decision, the one moment, that's not the reality for most people, for 99.9%. And thanks, dude, for that, right? We'll talk about in strategy two about how it actually works. But what I can tell you for a fact is that micro, sorry, macro ain't how decisions work when it comes to deciding on your career change or your business. We could also call this this fallacy the macro decision fallacy. Please don't fall for it. It doesn't work like that. There isn't one big fork in the road moment. There isn't one big decision that you have to make. And if you don't get it right, you're screwed. It doesn't work like that. Okay. So don't fall for the one big decision fallacy. I get why a lot of people believe in it. You know, a lot of these stories are very pervasive in our culture, but they're great to read about. But remember to differentiate between that and the truth of how things work in the real world. And also, phew, can we just stop for a moment here and just exhale? I mean, pew, this this thing, you know, me to call out this fallacy, that should be a massive relief moment for you. Just think about all that paralyzing pressure that's probably, been, you've probably been feeling on you, you know, the having, like weighing heavily on you from believing in such a myth, you know, that you have to get that one decision right. If not, mm, 
talk about pressure on you. Like if the reality of career change was that you only get one stab, one opportunity at a client who's like, Ricky, I keep playing this song about one stab, one opportunity because I feel so pressurized. It's like, no wonder if you're putting off making decisions or putting off your career change because you're so afraid that it's some kind of, if you get there, it's like some kind of irreversible event that you cannot mess up or else you're screwed. <laughs> So first of all, let me remind you of the reality. The reality is actually the opposite of the one big decision, one big moment fallacy. Here's how it works in real life. A career change is made up of and is the result of loads and loads of small decisions taken over time. Okay, paired with actions. And the good news is that because these are loads of small decisions, that also means that any one decision is much easily reversible. And because you're pairing it with action, you can get real life feedback through to throughout the process versus just having to rely on these big irreversible decisions with no feedback before you make them. So my friend, my dear listener, please stop putting that much pressure on on yourself. And let's face it, you might even be using this pressure as an excuse to stay with the devil you know to end to avoid making the wrong decision. Okay? Phew. You don't have to get your first business right in one go or choose the right thing. You just have to start test driving elements of it and see if you like it. That's one way of thinking about this, right? So number one, don't fall for the big decision fallacy. You're not Frodo and the ring. <laughs> it's not that one moment, okay? Macro ain't how it works. Instead, what you should really worry about is you should really stop you know, backstacking or backpiling and being terrified of making the wrong decision, you should worry a lot more about all of the small decisions you're not making. We'll get to that, okay? So instead, what we're going to do, we are going to go micro. And that's the next strategy. And this is all around how career change actually works in the real world. So it's strategy number two, make micro decisions, take micro actions. Start small, but start now. From the very beginning of your career change, or right now, if you've already started a little bit, you want to be making decisions, plural, on a regular basis. So let me ask you this. What decisions have you already made, right? This is something I often ask new clients, the people come my way. What decisions around your career change have you already made? And people, they sort of look at me blankly. I, I mean, also, I get so many emails about this from listeners of the podcast saying, Ricky, I would love to change careers or start a business, but I don't trust myself to make any decisions or I'm paralyzed by making the wrong decisions. What if I don't trust myself? What if I screwed up? And then they sort of leave it there. Well, guess what? If all you have right now in terms of decision-making experience in your work life is a track record of making just a few decisions here and there over the many years, and let's say half of those were bad ones, then of course, of course, you might not feel very confident or experienced when it comes to career change decision-making. But is that really a reason why you should now refuse to make any more decisions when the upshot is that, well, as a result right now, you're stuck. You're not wanting to make any decisions, but what that means is you're stuck in a career or work profession you no longer enjoy. And therefore, decisions are being made by inaction or by time or by others making the decision for you. That is not ideal either, okay? So here's what I want you to do, and here's what the antidote is. Start making smaller, less scary decisions on a regular basis starting now and pair them with real-life feedback through action starting now. My dear listener, you should want to make decisions in your work life. That is how change happens. That is how career change happens. And also, you should want to be in charge, right? Let the control freak in you work to your advantage for change. I know a lot of you listening are oh, control freaks. So make it work for your career change, right? Be a lot more worried about not making decisions. The good kind of control freakery, okay? Now, did you also notice... I often in these podcast episodes refer to emails that I got from my listeners, from my subscribers, 
all of these podcast episodes that I'm doing, they are based on the most requested scenarios and questions from my newsletter subscribers. So if you want to influence what I talk about on this podcast, if you really love this podcast, then make sure you're subscribed to my emails over at thecareerchangepodcast.com. So go over there right after this episode or right now and sign up for the newsletter. And then tell me what you want me to cover on these episodes, okay? I'm doing this for you, my friend. That's probably also why you're feeling like I'm inside of your head. All I'm doing is taking what is in these emails and also, of course, from my 15 years plus experience of being inside the head of people just like you. Okay, so make sure you are on the newsletter list over at thecareerchangepodcast.com. Now, so remember, strategy number two is to make micro decisions and to take micro actions right? Make micro decisions and then follow them with micro actions. This is how you get out of your head, how you get external feedback, which is key, whether you're multi-passionate or you're an overthinker. It really is the ideal combo. You pair your small decision with a small concrete action, i.e. you follow through with your promise to yourself. You know, that's really what a decision is. I want this, not that. I want this, not that. And then you take action on your decision. You watch your confidence and your trust in yourself grow each time. You make a small decision, right? And so what if one of those smaller decisions turns out not to be right? You can course correct and then make another smaller decisions instead. And over time, they all add up to you getting the bigger picture, the accumulated decisions over time. Versus that one big scary one that doesn't exist. The accumulated decisions over time paired with action is how career change work. And also that's the powerful thing about making these micro smaller decisions is that they don't become these big irreversible things overnight. They're fixable one decision and one action at a time. Does that not sound way less intimidating and doable than worrying about the big decision? All right, so make this easier for yourself, my friend. (laughs) Like one of the the, the first decisions, for example, I asked my clients to make inside of my career change program, your career change map is, well, you need to decide, first of all, how much of a change do you actually need in your career? I.e., do you even need a career change, or do you just need a change within your current career? Is the problem your current profession, the entire profession, or is it just your current job? Now, the same thing for you. If you don't start there with making decisions around how much of a change you actually need, you're going to keep second guessing, especially if you also have the golden handcuffs. If you spend a lot of time maybe training for or work in your current career, you're just going to be kind of window shopping, whether really having an urgency around your change. And if you don't get clear and decide why you need a change and how much compared to the, the profession or career you're in right now, you will just replicate the same pain point and the same issues in your new career. That is what you'll do if you don't start making the decision around how much of a change you really need and why early on. Inside of my program, we also make decisions as to what do you want to matter most in your next career, in your next move, and also what are you not willing to compromise on amongst many other decisions that we also make inside of your career change map. But what's so important for you to understand that these smaller decisions at the same time also help you counteract your tendency to overthink or your tendency to maybe have too many ideas because these decisions at the same time serves as yes or no, this, not that guidelines. So that when you start finding candidates, you know, opportunities, you know, jobs, careers, or business ideas, then you're able to assess them in the light of the decisions you've already made. As opposed to just thinking that you can assess any one profession or any one business idea by making just one big decision. You need to make loads of small decisions instead to get clear on what you want. So maybe what you need to do is to reframe the importance of making decisions for you. So instead of, and instead, you know, worry about not making a lot of them and on a regular basis. Here's the thing. I want you to think about decision making as empowering yourself because they, decision making gives you power and clarity. There is nothing more exhausting than second guessing, right? 
Instead, what I want you to do is to start looking at what decisions can you make and what can you take actions on? And that's from the very beginning. There is nothing worse than spending the majority of your career change just window shopping and over-researching without having a framework, without having regular decisions to work from. It's a waste of time and it's exhausting, okay? So my so micro, not macro, is how career transitions, they work in real life for real people, especially once you're over 35. But it's also how you Throughout the process, one decision and one action at a time, that's how you build career change confidence. That's build, how you build knowledge one step at a time. You decide, you get feedback, you learn, you revisit, then you, maybe you continue with that decision, you change it and you add time. Self-trust is built one decision, one action at a time. Because what you what need to happen over the, the coming months for you is one decision, one action at a time. That is how you become the person who's capable of making that change. You aren't that person yet. You become it one decision and one action at a time. So start making decisions and start pairing them with action right away. Don't delay. So number three, strategy number three is to become the key decision maker in your own life. Now, hand on heart, let me ask you this. Are you really the key decision maker in your own work life right now? Or are any kind of work decisions really kind of made by default or inaction, avoidance, or maybe even by others? Going forward, may I recommend this? Stop outsourcing your decision making. Stop defaulting it, avoiding it, or even worse, piling all of those decisions up for that future moment you think is somehow going to arrive because you're buying into this fallacy, what I want you to do instead is right now make the decision to become the key decision maker in your own work life starting now. Forget the massive pressure of the whoa, one big decision. It's a myth. You just want to take micro decisions followed by micro actions. This, not that. This, not that. Be an active participant in the creation of your best work life. Enter the arena. Enter the stage of career change. Now, one of the things that's so pervasive as well <laughs> in our culture right now is that we're becoming a culture of consumers, not creators. We're spectators, not active participants. You know, Instagram, documentary, TV series, we're sort of being conditioned almost to just be on the sidelines watching what everybody else is doing. My invitation to you is, why not become an active participant instead? It's time for you to step into the arena of career change, so to say. Now, I love this expression, you know, get into the arena, be in the arena. And I came across this expression um, via a bookmark. I don't know about you, but I love bookmarks. I know it's something really old school, but I love collecting bookmarks. And this bookmark, I got it around 2010, 2010 from this really cute little boutique hotel in Orlando. Um, it was by this little lake. It was really cute. And it was sort of a a little boutique hotel that was sort of Hemingway inspired, you know, aimed at writers, um, you know, on the way down to, to Key West uh, via Orlando. Um, and, and this bookmark, there was a quote from Teddy Roosevelt um, from a speech that he'd given at the Sorbonne um, in Paris, the University of Paris Sorbonne, just before World War I. And, and the quote said on this bookmark, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, in the quote. You know, the one who participates as opposed to just watches and overthinks and criticizes. And then the, the, the bookmark went on to say, in quotation mark, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out the strong, how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. And then going back to, to that other quote, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, in the quote. And that quote that you probably have heard, it's a very famous quote now, um, that, that quote really made me think of the choice that you have as an as aspiring career changer, a choice that you have, but there's so many aspiring career changers they choose not to, to make 
right? And, 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 and I've noticed this again and again. What you have right now is the opportunity to change careers or to start your own business, but you've got to do it one decision at a time. The only difference between you and those who've already successfully changed careers or started that business is that they kept making decisions and pairing it with actions one day at a time, one decision, one action at a time. They didn't wait for that one big moment. They didn't fall for that fallacy. They didn't backlog everything to make one big decision, nor did they somehow wait to be chosen, waited for the conditions to be perfect, or hoping somehow by inaction something would happen. In short, my friend, you must enter this arena of career change. And you do that one decision, one action at a time. So are you in the arena when it comes to your career change, right? Are you? Ask yourself that. But I also know, and let's get really frank about this, I also know there is another reason why you might be afraid to get into that arena Another reason why you might be afraid of becoming the key decision maker in your own life, in your work life, it might be scary. Why? Because once you step into that arena, then suddenly you're being seen and judged by those on the benches, those on the sidelines who themselves are not in the arena, right? Your boss, your friends, your colleagues, others. And boy, do they have opinions about the choices you might be making, the decisions you might be making, because they might not align with how they see you, what they want for you, what they expect from you, how they continue you living your life or during your career. Maybe money is involved, ego is involved, etc. But let's be clear about why you should not listen or worry about those who are on the sidelines. And this is where I found a great quote from Brené Brown, the American research professor and author, who you might have heard about. She she actually very much commercialized or popularized uh, the quote from Roosevelt about the man in the arena that you heard about. She's a wonderful writer. And here's what she said in one of her books. If you are not in the arena, getting your ass kicked on occasion, I am not interested in or open to your feedback. There are a million cheap seats in the world today filled with people who will never be brave with their own lives, but who will spend every ounce of energy they have hurling advice and judgment judgment at those of us trying to dare greatly. Their only contributions are criticism, cynicism, and fear-mongering. If you're criticizing from a place where you are also where you are not also putting yourself on the line, I'm not interested in your feedback. End of quote. Phew, I love that so much. What a relief, right? Come right back to yourself and take charge. You know, yes, there will be critics, but if they're on the sideline, sorry, mate, you're not in the arena. You have no freaking idea, and I don't have any respect for your opinion because you're not in here with me, also knowing what's going on. So take the pressure off, my friend. Be more afraid of decision by indecision, where things are totally out of your control, right? And here's really the main, another reason why you would want to become the key decision maker in your own work life. Let's be clear, inactivity or not making a choice is a decision in itself. Let me say that again. Inactivity or not making a choice is a decision in itself. And it actually creates even more uncertainty in its outcome. So wouldn't you rather be in charge and being the ones who actually chooses to make the decisions actively by being in the arena than where you might be right now? If you are in limbo land right now, wouldn't you want to get out of there? Even the Pope got rid of limbo, right? So the answer to your question, how to avoid making the wrong decision, is to make loads of smaller decisions and pairing it with action instead. So here's the recap of this episode. Number one, don't fall for the one big decision fallacy. Whoa, that moment doesn't happen. There's not just one big decision to be made. Number two, make micro decisions and take micro action. That should be a lot scary as well, a lot less scary. Okay, and you can start now. And number three, become the key decision maker in your own work life. Be more afraid of not making decisions than of making them. And remember, there is no one big decision. We're talking about loads of little decisions, pairing with actions, starting now. 
unmade decisions are exhausting. Have you noticed? So give yourself the gift of making decisions again and again, starting now. Step into the arena. Start making decisions and watch your career change take off like a rocket. One decision and one action at a time in a direction you actually want. If you want professional help getting into that arena and staying in that arena, then come over to the careerchangepodcast.com to learn more about your career change map. And I'll see you there. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>